The Archdiocese of Chicago is a vibrant and diverse faith community. We celebrate our faith through worship, evangelization, and reaching out to the needy. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. This is the Black Catholic Initiative, bringing you the experiences, perspectives, and the insights of black Catholics throughout the Archdiocese of Chicago from north to south and from east to west. I'm Deacon James Norman, Vicar for Deacons of the Archdiocese of Chicago, sitting in for Father Michael Trail. Here we discuss what's happening, what and who is having an impact in the black Catholic community, and how we move forward in faith, faith that is uniquely Catholic and uniquely black. With me today is Dr. Kimberly Lymore, Director of the Augustus Tolton Spirituality Pastoral Program. Let me get that right. Director of the Augustus Tolton Pastoral Ministry Program, which we'll, prop, we'll refer to as lovingly as Tolton Scholars Program. Dr. Lymore, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Deacon Norman, for having me this morning. As, as we begin for our audience, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're more than the director of the Tolton Scholars Program, is that right? That's correct. I am the pastoral associate at St. Sabina Church and have been here since um, 2000 as the pastoral associate. Actually been a member of St. Sabina since 1983. So if you can say I'm, I'm homegrown okay. here at St. Sabina. And now how long have you been connected with the Tolton Scholars Program? Um, I was actually myself a Tolton Scholar. I was, uh, in 1998, I started the Tolton Program at CTU and um, started in the Tolton Program and graduated with my MDiv in 2003 from CTU and then went on to McCormick Theological Seminary and got my DMIT in 2009. Now for our audience who doesn't, doesn't know, tell us, about the Tolton Scholars Program. When was it started? How, why was it started? And how's it progressed over the years? The Tolton Program actually is in its 34th year, going into, re we ready to celebrate 35 year next year. Um, it was started in 1990 by uh, Sister Dr. Jamie Phelps, who would see, you know, African-Americans working in um, the different parishes, but not really seeing them at, um, Oops, I'm sorry. Not really seeing them at at their um, um, in the in the academia at, at CTU. So she uh, went on to um, uh, ask Father Stein Senior, "Hey, can we have a scholar? Let's start a scholarship program." Went to ask the Archdiocese, and at that time, Cardinal Bernardine uh, bought into it also. And so um, that's kind of how, in a nutshell, how the Tolton program started at CTU. And it's kind of one of the only ones that offers 100% scholarships to lay black, black lay men and women in the Archdiocese of Chicago. So bears repeating, uh, the program is then free to the participants? For the most part, you know, it, you know we ask them to have a little skin in the game here. And so we ask that they raise $1,000 a year. And that could be going through parish ministries, going through their parishes that they're associated with, uh, going to uh, sell raffle tickets, uh, donating money. So however they, they do it, it's because, you know, the actually to get a master's level um, degree, it's about $50,000. So, so, you know, we ask that, they, you know, if you, you, you're in the program for three to five years, you know, that's. Maybe your investment might be five thousand dollars if you only have to do at least a thousand dollars each year. Okay, and so you said the program can run from three to five years. I guess depending on how aggressive. Depending on the degree, if you're going for a master's of arts in pastoral studies, you, you know less less credit hours is needed as opposed to a master's of divinity, which you know uh, more hours are needed. So it probably would take more like. Five years, like when I got my MDiv, it was about five years because our scholars really do it part time. One for money wise, you know, it's just easier. But for two, you know, most all of them have full time jobs unless they have retired from from uh, an organization. Okay, the, in the first uh, in 1990 or that first class that started, how many scholars were in that first program? Um, I would say maybe about five. Okay. 
you know, uh, uh, Sister Jamie, Sister Marinette, and uh, like Joanne Glass, some of the names you might recognize from back in the day. Okay. Uh, so those were the kind of the first scholars that went through the program. And over the course of, as you said, 34 years going on to 35, how many total Tolton scholars have come through the program? We've had um, roughly about averaging one a year, about 33 scholars so far that have graduated. Okay. Um, I, I, some of the successes along the way, if you share successes mm -hmm. and challenges along the way. And... Some of the successes have been, you know, most of our, our graduates alum, you know, uh, you know, working as chaplains, mm -hmm. uh, working as diocesan employees. You have uh, Angela Swain, who is the director of Human Dignity and Solidarity. Um, and Willa Neely, who is uh, an evangelization coordinator. So we have diocesan offices and have had some in the past. Uh, we have campus ministers, we have pastoral associates. So, you know, most of the time, not everybody goes into full-time ministry, um, but in some way they stay connected because that is kind of one of the, the uh, uh, requirements of the program after you graduate to be connected in a parish, whether you're working full-time or volunteering, for at least three years after the scholarship, because it's partially sponsored by the Archdiocese of Chicago. Okay, okay. Um, and, and some of the, uh, and you ahead. asked me about challenges yes. also, but some of the challenges would be, um, um, you know, kind of raising funds, getting younger scholars, uh, definitely, you know, so that, that the legacy could live on um, as we are growing older and wiser. <laughs> but uh, so as we as we are approaching, you know, a lot of our scholars are a little on the on the, uh, the more wisdom side. I think uh, my youngest is less than 40. Okay. I have one, but mostly everyone that kind of gets into the program, it might be like a, a second kind of career that they might be, look, be looking for, which is fine also. But just trying to get younger people involved in, in this uh, lay vocation. Okay. And I was just wondering if you give a sense of in the program, um, are there key, probably there are key or core courses that one would experience or those courses that the scholars have said really enlightening, really insightful, um, really had me see things from a fresh or different perspective? You know, I think, you know, all of them, um, just the, the, when they get deeper into Old Testament, New Testament, um, um, introduction to theology, um, the the black spirituality courses um, um, that uh, Dr. Vanessa White teaches. Um, you know the the ones that are taught. We, she has a the, thea and um, Thurman kind of class. So um, that so those kind of classes have been enlightening to them because they just have not been exposed to uh, black theology. You know, so when they get into James Cone and and, and women as the, theologians that they, they begin to study in some classes, then they begin to, uh, that begins to open up their eyes. So that's kind of different from, you know, just taking, you know, your normal classes. A lot of them might go down to the Institute of Black Catholic Studies in, in Xavier, and that's an immersion experience for three weeks. Okay. Are there, as you, you said, the, the intent and focus now is to try to attract younger um, folks to the program? It, it is. I mean, um, a, as we age out, you know, we look at legacy and how how um, to continue sustainability. And so as, as we look at that going forth, I think, you know, it's important to get our younger people involved. And unfortunately, a lot of our churches in general, across the board, whether it being Catholic, Protestant, whatever church, um, um, are struggling with uh, engaging young people um, because of the, you know, one of the things that they say, oh, they don't, you know, believe or want to deal with organized religion. And, and, and unfortunately, in the Catholic Church, a lot of especially young black women or young women in general do not see themselves in leadership positions. Has, has I was going to ask, as related to that, then, has the course content or focus of the Tolton Scholars Program changed over the years to reflect some of the things that have happened that you're referring to in society. Um, people looking for a role, seeing a role, um, understanding, approaching organized religion. 
Um, the approach has not changed. Um, however, yeah, like I say, um, just kind of bringing in those those ones that are kind of open minded and want to, and then hopefully they can go back and reach the younger people. Okay. You know, for me to try to reach a young person, okay, you know, I, I kind of, you know, you know, was was I pulled one in, um, but for the um, a younger person to say, hey, this was beneficial to me as being a person in ministry at a parish or whatever I'm doing, then it helps that 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 they can pull someone else along. Okay. And it also helps to be referred by uh, a pastor who sees that can tap into the gifts of that younger person and say, hey, I think you should, you know, uh, once you, you know, go to get your bachelor's degree, if you want a master's degree, uh, check out CTU and the Tolton program. You mentioned that. How many of your referrals for Tolton Scholars, how many what or what percentage are referred by pastor? And, you know, what percentage are those who find it through another avenue? Um, I would say maybe 20% referred by pastors. Most of it has been word of mouth. Um, like you say, trying to uh, talk to some people. Uh, you know, a lot of things, as with anything, uh, uh, people joining any organization, ministry, or going into something different, um, it's, it's relationship building. Okay. So, you know, they might not come that first year, but, you know, maybe, you know, I think I talked to Gardis for maybe a year before I got him in. Okay. And he's my only male that I have in the program. And so males would be another um, um, uh, people that we would like to target. I mean, I mean, sometimes they don't want to go, no offense, go into the diaconate, but uh, they would, you know, you know, want to do, they still do a ministry in their churches. Now, granted, if it weren't for the women, there would be no church, but <laughs> certainly. But we are, you know, look for males also okay. to tap into those those males that could be role models, so people can see that there are males that are in uh, that are working in ministry um, in our churches. Would I be mistaken, or, or would our audience be mistaken, that for me to consider the Tolton Scholars Program? Do I need to come from a historically black Catholic parish? Not at all. Okay. Uh, we've had uh, uh, scholars that were from Evanston parishes that were mixed. And, and now most of them are basically mixed. So it doesn't have to be a historical predominantly black Catholic parish because in all your parishes nowadays across the archdiocese, you have black Catholics. So it's reaching out to those who would benefit from some knowledge or just the information that that we give about and that we share among Black Catholics in the Archdiocese of Chicago as a whole. Okay, it, you spoke a little bit in, uh, about if I go and receive or the masters or perhaps a PhD through the program, I'm then able to certainly be more effective in ministries within my parish. Are there perhaps paid roles for me within the church or within a nonprofit that's connected to the church? Oh, always, always. When we get a solid theological uh, grounding, um, it opens the doors to other opportunities. So yes, parish work is, 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 is different. Not all parishes can afford a full-time pastor or associate, a full-time youth minister. Uh, but as I say, the chaplaincy program, uh, we have people in the arch. Uh, Angela Swain has a PhD. However, she got her PhD, I think, from University of Chicago. CTU offers a doctorate in ministry and not necessarily a PhD program. Okay. Um, so, but, you know, PhD, DMINs, um, like I say, MDivs, MAPS, you know, just it runs the gamut about, uh, it opens the doors to what you can do. Uh, within the archdiocese, within um, even, you know, we talk about uh, uh, people that um, nursing homes, kind of uh, looking at other areas that might need chaplains there that don't have chaplains. And of course, the hospitals, jail ministries. Okay. So there's so, the, the door is wide open for lay ministry um, here in the arch and across the nation. All right. Well, thank you. We're going to take a break, and then when we come back, uh, we'll maybe focus in two areas and, and any other that you'd like to share. Um, if you're having a conversation with a potential candidate for Tolton Scholars, what are kind of the common questions and then your responses? There'll be one. And then how can parishes, pastors, and parish leadership 
support the Tolton Scholar Program. We'd love to tackle those topics when we come back from the break. Okay, great. Community is core to Catholic Charities' founding mission. For more than 100 years, we have met people and families where they are, serving anyone in need, regardless of their faith, gender, race, or ethnicity. As our world absorbs the economic, political, and social aftershocks of the pandemic, 50% or more of the 6 million people living in Cook and Lake Counties have little or no savings. They are a paycheck away from zero. We are deeply grateful to everyone in the Catholic Charities community who partners with us to alleviate the suffering of the people we serve and offer them a better path forward. We are witnessing a message of mercy and hope to a world very much in need. Learn more at catholiccharities.net. always say, how can you spend your day with three-year-olds? Seeing the changes that they go through and just the journey and how they grow, this is a very rewarding job. Even though at the end of the day, we're not the highest paid people on earth. And when I have a parent contact me and say, my child loves school, that to me, I'm setting that foundation for their love of learning. Because really you are changing lives, you are molding lives. Shape the next generation of leaders, teach, Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. I am a seminarian. The church needs compassionate and well-trained priests to help guide each of us through life. What inspires me, what draws me always to the priesthood is continue to see priests be a beacon of hope for other people. You can play a part in the education of these young men as they prepare for a life of service to others. I want to be that beacon of hope too, and it, it sets my heart on fire. To support our seminarians, make your gift at archchicago.org slash seminarian fund or call 312-534-7959. back. This is Deacon Jim Norman, Vicar for Deacons with the Archdiocese of Chicago, sitting in for Father Michael Trail. This is Catholic Chicago, the Black Catholic Initiative. Today I'm with Dr. Kimberly Lymore, Director of the Augustus Tolton Pastoral Ministry Program, we refer to as Tolton Scholars. Um, Dr. Lymore, I was asking before the break, would talk about the common questions that you may get for a prospective scholar, one who's considering the program. Um, one of the things that we we kind of key in on is kind of previous ministerial um, experience, or have you been working in a, a, a so ministering in a, in your current parish settings? Um, and then what has called them to ministry? What gives them life about ministry? Where do they see themselves in maybe five years, or what what would what do they feel that this degree uh, will give them? Uh, whether it be a maps or um, uh, Masters of Divinity, MDiv. Um, so, what 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 are they looking to in the future to actually use in on the and use the degree for? Um, and always encouraging them that you know, of course, you know we can't we don't guarantee jobs, but you know it you know it gives you an edge up just to have that theological grounding as you go forth in doing any kind of ministry or vocation outreach. And just to, I, I want to get a sense. So if I am currently on the parish council or finance mm -hmm. committee, would that be um, a start point to consider? Exactly. Okay. And, you know, just involvement in your parish. I mean, uh, you know, ministry, again, is about relationships. And, and if you're sitting in the back of the church in the pew and nobody really knows who you are, then you're not really able to in, engage people. And so we look to, uh, because our, our scholars are looked to as leaders. 
And so building those leadership skills through our formation um, and, and that they that we have, then that kind of helps them in, become more um, effective in ministry. And so we look for, you know, le- any kind of leadership skills and uh, leadership positions that they might have held and just the kind of uh, um, minister, ministry uh, things that they have been involved with at, at a parish. And you also talked about the second, the call. So this notion that they want to do more. I might be in ministry, mm-hmm. parish council or finance committee, or I might be leading RCIA or baptismal prep, but I want to do more. And, and I want the exactly. skills to do more. Right, and, right, exactly. And, and, and in doing that, you know, it, you know, you're helping people, but you're also helping yourself. But I think, you know, our gifts are not given to us just for us. And so we need to be able to um, um, ex- share those gifts with the, the larger uh, faith community, whether it be local, your local parish, um, the archdi- archdiocese across the, um, across the continent. I mean, you know, most times when our, our alum, they get called on to do retreats, um, day, day of reflections. Mm. Uh, so there's different other opportunities um, for them um, to that and, and to uh, hone their skills uh, okay. as a retreat leader or as a campus. If you want, especially if you're interested in going to the campus ministry, um, you know there are always those retreats that they give during um, the campus ministries half for the students. So it's, there's so many different ways that that you could use your skills, and I think. I believe and and truly uh, I try to express to the priest that that you know lay ministry is it, it helps you out um, because you know there's a shortage of priests as we know not that many deacons around anymore as we know that too and so um, lay ministry and lay and and called and 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 developed and formed lay ministers. Um, are the way for the future, for the future of the church, if we were, we want to keep it going, especially in the black Catholic community. Absolutely. I also heard you in your response say too, it's not only being supportive and helpful in your church, but the black Catholic community overall. Exactly. Through retreats exactly. And, and other things, speaking events and training and Exactly. It's just so many different things. And a lot of our alum are called on to do that. Sometimes our scholars, um, Gardas is a wonderful historian mm-hmm. in black Catholic history and, and black history in general. And so he gets called on uh, to do things. So, it, you know, whatever, you know, I too, they encourage, you know, parishes to to tap into either scholars or our, our Tolton alum because they have been trained and formed. And so the information that you're going to get, they're going to, if they don't, if they're, if that's their spirit, their um, expertise, area of expertise, you know, they're going to research and do what they need to do. They're going to exit, if they call to, to do a sermon, they're going to do the exegesis on the scripture in order to present the word so that it is in a correct context. Okay. Well, that, that may be a great segue. So one of the things I had asked before the break is, uh, how can parishes, pastors, um, even parishioners support Tolton scholars? I think one of the things you just said is pastors can tap into current Tolton scholars as a resource. Exactly. Especially the ones in their parish. Okay. You know, I definitely use them or, like I say, Tolton alum also. Okay. Um, they can uh, recommend people that they see are, you know, doing ministry uh, because one of the the letters that is required is from the pastor of that parish. So if they see somebody that they think that they might be good for the Tolton program, recommend them okay. so that, you know, we can build our scholar pool. Um, they can, uh, like parishes, they can support your local scholar. If you don't have a scholar in your parish, definitely reach out to the Tolton program at CTU. We always uh, ask, you know, like you say, either me, myself, or reach out to the CTU. Um, but, you know, for speakers, if you have day of reflections or, or, you know, retreats that you're looking for someone to, to lead a quality retreat, um, definitely call on them to do that. For parishioners, you know, support a local, support your local scholars or support the, the Tolton program. We're asking all parishes um, 
church and, and black deacons, everyone, to truly support the Tolton program financially. Okay. Um, and our diocesan funds are kind of um, being cut a little more. Um, and so we have, if we're to keep this uh, legacy alive that Sister Jamie started in 1990, then we need the black Catholic community support. There's no answer to us about it because no one else is gonna support us but our community. So we need to make sure that we uh, continue that going forth. So let's let's follow that thread is, is, is a great place. Can I go to the Tolton Scholar website and make a donation today? You can go to ctu.edu and click on donation and you can, in the comment section, you can mention uh, Tolton uh, Scholarship. Okay. Or just put Tolton in. You don't even have to put a whole lot in it. That you want your funds to be directed to Tolton. Okay. So there are different ways that you can give, but definitely online works. Um, a check mailed to uh, the Tolton program at CTU 5416 uh, South uh, Cornell, 60615. You can, you know, mail a check. Um, so, you know, there's so many different ways to support it. I'm hoping that our our 35th Harambe, which um, tentatively is March 1st, 2025, uh, will be a great success. And um, looking for that place to actually hold it, make it even bigger and bigger than this last year. We have about 100, 120 people each year. I want to make it 300 people. Right. I want it to be a success so that we can, you know, kind of set that precedent of going forth and that we want to, that, and it, it's a way of commitment that we're saying that we want to keep the totem program alive for the black Catholic community. Wonderful. Outstanding. Listen, thank you for your work. We're going to make sure that our audience keeps that 35th Harambe in mind and that we make that an incredible success. We'll get you back here about a month before that event to talk okay. about the event and to talk about how parishes and parishioners can support that event to continue to make the Tolton Scholars an outstanding program and one that is well-funded and supported by the black Catholic community. Dr. Lymore, thank you for being here. Thank you for all you're doing, both at your parish, St. Sabina, and for the Tolton Scholars and for the black Catholic community. Thank you, Deacon Jim. I appreciate you having me on today. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. God bless you and the work that you're doing. Thank you. Take care.